Whenever I tell people I like sports games, I'm met with bewilderment. Even if the person doesn't say anything, the look on their face is just a look that says, really? Even on the rare occasions where I talk about my YouTube channel, which is based on sports video games, they just don't get it. They say, why don't you play a real game and list reasons why sports games are awful. I don't necessarily disagree, but things were not always like this. Let me take you back, 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 back to 2005. A lot of notable things happened in this year, like the release of the movie Fever Pitch. Don't look at me, look at Wikipedia's notable events in 2005 page. But the notable thing that not many people talk about is 2005 is considered the golden year for sports games. You had so many quality titles, NFL 2K5, MVP Baseball 2005, whether it's a simulation or arcade game, you have something to play. There was an abundance of games per sport to choose from. You hate MVP Baseball? Well, that's a stupid opinion and you have no taste, but you could pick an alternative MLB game. Same for the NFL, NBA, and NHL. Even Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony were producing their own sports games. You might think this was oversaturation, but the competition these games gave each other was the main driving force behind their success. As far as NFL games went, Madden was by far the most popular game, but hardcore football fans preferred the NFL 2K series. In order to win some of the more casual players over, the price of NFL 2K lowered to $20. That's a more advanced move than starting on a corner in tic-tac-toe. That's an aggressive move, and it paid off. It paid off a little too well. There are multiple things that led to the collapse of sports games. Let's talk about the first thing. While fans liked the ability to choose what game they would play, and developers enjoyed the competition, the corporations just see this as a loss of money. EA would come in and give everyone what they wanted, and when I say everyone, I mean just the suits at EA, because those are the only people that really matter, not the consumer. It's all about the money. EA would sign a deal with the NFL that would give EA and only EA the right to publish NFL games. So in laid man's terms, NFL 2K got laid out, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So at this point, you can only do two things. Buy Madden or just not play any NFL licensed football game. Since 2K got their football game taken away from them, they decided to be like the Empire and strike back. I don't actually watch Star Wars, so I hope that reference made sense. 2K inked a deal with the MLB to give 2K the exclusive rights to MLB games, with the exception that first parties can make games. So in laid man's terms, we got laid, man. Except 2K was the pitcher and we were the catcher. In order to play an MLB game, you had to either buy MLB 2K or buy MLB The Show, which is only limited to Sony consoles. The NFL and NBA deals took away all this choice we once had. All these games are gone. Popular series like NFL 2K and MVP Baseball were regulated to made-up fantasy leagues and college games that didn't last long at all. Due to the lack of competition, games got worse and worse. There's no need to make an amazing game when people have no alternative to your product. EA doesn't have a 2K football breathing down their neck anymore. They played Monopoly in one, and with the seventh generation of consoles coming out, we get our next problem. New consoles are coming out. We need to push the envelope. Better graphics, better animations, more realism. This is what the companies were thinking. And what's one way to show that you improved your game? Well, if you're EA, the answer is to lie to your audience with misleading trailers, of course. I've already covered this in another video I made, but instead of showing off their actual games, they would run these CGI trailers and convey to us that this is the real game you're looking at right here. It's like those mobile game ads. With the benefit of hindsight, it's easy to say that this is obviously fake, but we didn't know better back then. These trailers were popular and put realism and graphics as a primary focus for future sports games. Now, realism isn't necessarily a bad thing. These are simulation video games, right? These have to be close to the thing they're attempting to simulate, right? But the thing is, you have to look at the other half of this, and that other half is a video game. You have to be like the avatar and maintain the balance between these two things, but games decided to lean more towards the realism aspect of things. MLB 13 the show, so real, it's unreal. More focus on realism means less focus on gameplay. This would lead to things that would bog down the gameplay like stamina bars and wrestling games, 
or our over-reliance on animations that literally take away user control. I made a video on MVP Baseball 2005. There I go, plugging my shit again. And when I was searching for developer interviews, I came across this quote by Ben Brinkman, associate producer of MVP Baseball 2005. One of our goals at the beginning of this project was to have a game that ran consistently at 60 frames per second. We met this goal on all platforms. I don't know too many games that can say that. In doing so, we had to make some sacrifices, such as cutting base coaches. I know this is a game killer to some people, but as a longtime gamer, I would take 60 frames per second any day of the week over base coaches who are there to be nothing more than eye candy. A smooth playing game is the ultimate to me, but I could be wrong. This quote shows the difference in philosophies between these two generations. It's unheard of to think an inclusion like that would be made today with all the focus on sweat and the creases of the jerseys. This trend of relying on realism was started on the seventh generation, and it wouldn't be the only trend to start on the seventh generation. Online gaming really took off with the seventh generation of consoles. And that meant so did online marketplaces, patches, and DLC. Everyone was wondering about the endless possibility for content. You can make in-game fixes, or add new modes, or even eliminate the yearly release and just add on to a single game. <laughs> yeah, no. For the most part, none of that happens. The big controversial game mode that shaped sports games today was introduced in Madden 2010. Madden Arcade, of course. No, I'm kidding, it's Ultimate Team. For those unfamiliar, Ultimate Team is a mode where you collect players, jerseys, stadiums, and other knickknacks in form of cards. You collect these cards by using coins to buy them. You get the coins by playing games, but if you just play the game, you earn not even enough coins to buy a gumball from a gumball machine. This is done purposely so you can spend real money on these coins, and it's safe to say this works because not only is Madden Ultimate Team still around after over a decade since its inception, but it has spun off onto other EA products and other sports games have their own version of Madden Ultimate Team. The controversy here is that for the average player, you pretty much have to buy coins and packs in order to get a good team. Yes, in theory, you can play to earn a good team, but it's such a grind to do so, it would take so long. You would have to make playing Madden Ultimate Team your job. Slave away at it. Ignore your friends and ignore your family because Ultimate Team. Honestly though, you have played the game for a long time. Don't you have anything else to do with your time? And when you put in all that hard work, you'll have a good team to show for it. Except the next installment of the game would come out and you would have to start over from scratch. So yeah, what the hell is even the point? In order to enjoy the mode, you have to buy the cards. You just have to. The 2K basketball games have their own version of Ultimate Team, but they take their version to the next level. There's this constant debate on if these Ultimate Team modes are gambling. Yeah, Pete Rose has entered the chat. 2K added in these straight up gambling games into their games, and I shouldn't have to give you a long diatribe to explain why that's bad. In past games, they also made their My Career mode microtransaction heavy. You need to put in some serious hours to upgrade your guy, but stuff like haircuts and attire is also super expensive. It's like you gotta choose between looking good and playing good. They also have ads in their game too. With all of these in-game purchases, you would think the prices of the games would at least go down, but no, it doesn't. These games are still $60, oh, oh no, I'm sorry, $70 for a game that'll be outdated in a year. Since these ultimate team modes make the most revenue, all other game modes are neglected. Franchise modes in MLB The Show and in Madden haven't been updated in ages because there's no way to get any money out of the people like there is with ultimate team modes. Gameplay tweaks are non-existent, and emphasis is put on new modes that encourage you to spend money. With the rising popularity of story-driven games, sports games would attempt to follow, but majority of these narratives seem like they were directed by Spike Lee, and get this, one of them actually was directed by Spike Lee. Fresh off his three game, 62 point scoring streak, frequency vibrations! <laughs> All of these modes try to wrap a story around sports gameplay, which is even more difficult to do than a fighting game. The stuff you do doesn't matter in the slightest. In certain stories, you can completely suck all kinds of ass, but the story doesn't change. 
You're still that up and coming young superstar that's taking the league by storm, even though you put up garbage numbers almost every game. Most of the storylines are the standard underdog coming of age story that's been done to death. In cases like MLB The Show, you don't even get the story, you get this documentary style that adds nothing to the game. It's less so a documentary and more so the guy from the Firestone tire commercials pops into your head every now and again. An all-star player is encouraged to continue to broaden his game. Firestone is a car company. Overall, these are mediocre. Here, I have an idea. Put a controller in your hands, put on the movie The Sandlot, and just pretend you're pressing buttons. That's a way better game experience than any of these sports game narratives. With how bad games are nowadays, you would think our friendly neighborhood journalists would take these games to task and comment on how games come across as lackluster cash grabs. But you'd be wrong in assuming these guys reviewing the games even care about the sport the game is based off of. For years, professional video game critics have just pushed out their sports game reviews just cause. I swear, GameSpot and IGN have slapped an 8 on every Madden from like 2007 to 2019. All the reviews say the same thing too. A step in the right direction, a step in the right direction. EA Tiburon is making large strides in the right direction. Only now it seems that some reviewers are starting to call this stuff out. And it's better late than never, I guess. If you don't like Ultimate Team, you suffer. As I mentioned before, you can't pick an alternative game because of licensing, exclusivity, or games just being MIA in general, which means you don't have choice like you did 15 years ago. Realism and modes that revolve around real world purchases hurt because in the past these games had unlockables that you would earn through gameplay and gameplay only. Now it just seems like we're in a never ending regression. Even games that have been good gameplay wise have stagnated. If you think sports games are the devil, I implore you to look outside of the mainstream bubble. Super Mega Baseball may not have the bells and whistles, but it's a fun baseball game. Out of the Park Baseball is a baseball sim that has the MLB license and is more in-depth than any baseball game that has ever been created. You can play Gridiron, a football game so simple yet so good. You could try whatever football game 2K is making, and if you have any other suggestions, leave them in the comments. Because sports games are better than this.